beautiful service for her. And uh, Eric's going to miss the first part of this because he'll have to read it off my notes. <laughs> I forgot to start the recording. <laughs> Carolyn gives me one simple little job. Press the button. Anyway, so, um, so it was a beautiful tribute to, to this woman. And um, I can't, it would be such a blessing if we all had that kind of service done for us when our time here on earth was gone. I mean, it was just truly beautiful. But it started me thinking about what we've been being taught in the last few weeks and about um, how we are to study his word and listen to his voice and act like his people, um, how we should act, and spread his word to the world, to our unloved, uh, not unloved, unsaved loved ones. Uh, to the people on the street, to the people we know, don't know. And, uh, and we've been kind of going that way through the teachings in the last, the last few weeks. And so uh, I want to start with Matthew 22, 36 through 40. <clears throat> Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So how do we do this? Jesus says, says it like it's easy. Love the good Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your being. Well, it's harder than that. It's harder than that because you have to take yourself out of the equation. You have to put God before yourself. And we ha humans have a hard time doing this. Especially we older ones who were around in the 60s and the 70s when it became all about me. The me generation. Me, me, I'm first. What I want counts. What I need is more important than uh, what God wants me to do. Me, 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 me. I don't know about any of you. I've had to struggle with that. So. <sighs> but by putting me first, we take God out of the equation. And everything starts going downhill. So how do we take ourselves out of the equation? Well, first, we make a decision to love God. That part's easy. He loves us. We love him back. After that, it gets more difficult because we have to start changing us. Now, I realize that this is not new to most of you. We've been at it for a while, like most of our lives, probably. But what I'm realizing, especially for me, is that we need to work on this part harder again. Not long ago, the Lord gave me a song set that leads in this direction. 
Now, you know how it is with me that the Lord speaks to me through song and that um, he gives me words through the songs. He gives me songs that are complete the way they are. Some of them I just take little bits of it that become very important. But um, I'm not going to sing the songs. I'm just going to share um, some of the messages that are in the song. The first one is humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you higher and higher. That's the whole song. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. And so in James 4.10, I like to look through my Bible. I do have it marked if I can find it. I put stickies and then don't always go by them. Give me a minute. I'll get there. Now, when you know where everything is and then you get up in front of people and all of a sudden you don't know where anything is. So. Okay, so in James 4.10, it says, Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. And then also, in James 4, 6, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And I can start with humble and just give you the definition of humble. When you are humble, you're not proud. You're not arrogant. To be humble is to be meek, submissive, and respectful to the Lord. Then the next part, the next song, is actually just a, a verse out of a whole song. Um, but when I started at, uh, at the uh, church in, in Upland, when um, in the, in the 1980s, they sang this only as a chorus. And they sang it over and over. And it really spoke to me. And take it to heart. Because what it is, is, so forget about yourselves and concentrate on him and worship him. Forget about yourselves, concentrate on him, and worship him, Christ the Lord. And then there's another old, old song that turn your eyes upon Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus and look straight in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim by the glory of his wondering grace or thank you I know it when I sing it most of the time <laughs> that's why I have to have the words in front of me because otherwise I ad lib okay so look Full in his wonderful face. Put your focus on Jesus Christ. Give your problems to him and give yourself to him. Glorify him. You will feel the heaviness of the world fall away as you do so. Your problems may not go away. Whatever you're dealing with may not go away. But if you give it all to him, he will give you a peace that comes from 
his strength, not yours. And so give your love to the Lord. Give it all to the Lord. Okay, so now we're going to go back to Matthew 22, 36 through 40, where it says the second part. Love your neighbor as yourself. This part is harder. At least I think so. This requires much more of us. I still have a lot of work to do in this area. Gee, lo and behold, I'm not perfect. Yeah, yeah, so. Been working at it for a while, still not even close. But God's not finished with me yet, so therefore, there's always hope. Okay, so first of all, we have to love ourselves. Before you can love your neighbor, you have to love yourself. And we have to do, um, we have to love ourselves as God loves us. If we have a past, and we all do, some of us it's just little transgressions, some of us it's huge transgressions, but we all have a past that we have to ask forgiveness for. And God forgives us. When we ask him, he forgives us. And he says, go forth and sin no more. Well, we don't always manage that, but we uh, hopefully stop doing some of the things we did and work on the others. And so, after God forgives us, comes an even, what I consider a very hard part. We have to forgive ourselves for any of the wrongs that we did, any of the transgressions that we did. We have to forgive ourselves. And all this has to be done before we can love our neighbor as ourselves, because we have to love ourselves first. How can you love your neighbor if you hate yourself? Doesn't work that way. Okay, so then after we have asked forgiveness and God gives it to us and we've forgiven ourselves, then we have to work out on a lot of changes within ourselves. We have to let go of a lot of behaviors that we've hung on to for a long time. We have to change maybe the way we think, the way we talk, the way we act, um, the way we see our humor, the songs that we listen to, the books that we read. We have to change a whole lot of stuff when, when we get started. So in Matthew, 6.14, went too far. For if you give, forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive you. It's all about forgiveness. It's very hard. And it doesn't come easy and it doesn't come all at once. Sometimes we have to work on forgiveness of people for 30 or 40 years before we actually manage to get it done. And, uh, and sometimes they have to work on it too before we can get there. So. In Luke 6.37, it 
it starts on a, a new um, new new part of, of uh, what we need to change. We have to stop being judgmental towards people. In Luke 6:37, it says, "Do not judge, and you will not be judged." Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Forgiveness, stop being judgmental. Accept people the way they are. In Matthew 7, 1, back and forth. In Matthew 7, 1, it talks about being uh, judgmental. And I like the way that the King James says it, where it says, judge not, lest you be judged. And in the NIV, it says, do not judge, or you too will be judged. We are not to be judgmental about people, about the way they are, the way they act, what they wear, how they live. We may be moved to conviction about these people, but that doesn't mean that we are to judge them. How they act, how they live, how they believe is between them and God. We are to love them the way God loves us. And we are to pray for them that they will uh, learn to love God and that God would love them and that they would change. And so we have a lot of change in them that we can do. In Galatians 5, Galatians 5, 13 through 15. You, my brothers, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. Do not live and act as people of the world, but do your best to behave as God's people. And then we're going to continue in Galatians. Galatians 15, 16 through 21. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of your sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. 
the acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft. Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy. Drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now this is Paul speaking to the Galatians. When we give up these behaviors, we will find it much easier to live and get along with our neighbors, family, friends, just other people in general. And now we get to the reward for changing our behavior. Also in Galatians. So Galatians 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. That's our reward. Those are the things we get when we are led by the Spirit and do as He wants us to do and put away all those other not nice behaviors. Not nice. <laughs> and that brings us back again to Matthew 22, 37 through 39. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law of the prophets hang on these two commandments. So as you go forth today and for the rest of your lives, as we all go forth, not just you, me too, all of us, may we love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind. And may we love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Thank you. I don't know where it went. <laughs> Let's pray. And Rich, you may come back up and Patty too. The blessing of Pat, having Patty on the keyboards with us. Oh, dear Lord God, as these words were brought forth, may they reach the people you want them to reach. May they, uh, may they glean the wisdom that you want them to hear. And may you enrich their lives and all the lives of all of us, Lord. And may we truly learn to love you with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our mind, and do as you say, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. In Jesus' name, amen.